Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. Before we get started, I'd like to read this brief disclaimer that you see on your screen right now. The Pharmacist Virtual Learning Experience brought to you by Mandel's Clinical Pharmacy is intended only as an educational program for patients. Any clinic-specific information shared by the nurses is the opinion of the nurse and is not intended to replace the recommendations or requests of your healthcare professionals. All medications will be dispensed by Mandel's Clinical Pharmacy according to the prescription as written by the provider. And now that we have that out of the way, I want to welcome everybody to the Pharmacist Virtual Learning Experience, an educational program created by Mandel's Clinical Pharmacy to bring you together with outstanding healthcare professionals right from the comfort of your very own home. Pharmacist takes place every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, now that we're back into uh, daylight savings or out of daylight savings. Tonight, we'll be providing a live medication instructional program on three fertility products, including an interactive Q&A throughout the program that you can be involved in. We are joined by various amazing HCPs each week from across the nation to provide you with a real world experience, just as if you were sitting across the table from them in the clinic tonight. Today, we are joined by Wanda Hofkesang, and I would like to say thank you very much to her for joining. Please join us, everybody, via Zoom or Facebook Live, and we invite you to be a part of the discussion by sharing your questions with Wanda in either format, whether the Zoom chat or the Facebook Live chat. And thank you again for your time and interest this evening. And now I would love to turn it over to Wanda Hafgesang. Thank you so much. Hi, Craig. I know that's a mouthful with my last name, but he always does a really good job at that. As Craig stated, my name is Wanda Hofkesang. I am a fertility reproductive medicine nurse. I've been a nurse for over 25 plus years and a good amount of my experience has been in the field of fertility. So I've always loved the aspect of teaching and with Mandel's wonderful program, the pharmacist program, it is really providing a wonderful opportunity for um, you out there, the viewer, to be able to see a few of the products that might be a part of your cycle if you're starting this evening or if you potentially are starting um, maybe in a few days or a couple of weeks. It's really great to have this opportunity for you to see everything. What we are going to do is that we will be walking through three of the fertility products this evening. Um, I will mention which ones those are. And then as Craig stated, we will follow each of the videos with a uh, live Q&A um, question and answer session. And keep, remember to keep in your questions to uh, rather general um, questions because anything that's very specific, I might have to have you, you know, follow up with your um, center and talk to your primary nurse or your physician. Um, our goal is to help you become a pro at your medication technique. You're going to see some mixing and um, some technique of how to mix and also administration technique, which is really helpful. I think the more you can be organized beforehand, the better. Um, all of the videos along with tonight's video as well are always archived and they are available on YouTube, Facebook, um, My Mandel's Pharmacy Pharmacist. So that's really important to know because even if you feel like you watched it once and you need to review it again and again, I encourage that as always. I think it's great. Um, the, the medications are visual. So it's really important to really these videos provide that opportunity, especially for those of us I know myself being a visual learner. Um, the three medications that we're going to do tonight are the Gonalef Readyject Pen. We are also going to do HCG, which is an acronym for a long term called human chorionic gonadotropin. Um, sometimes there might be trade names of those products, such as Pregnil or Novarel that you might have at home, or a generic variety of that. And uh, finally, we will also go over Sonera, which is a numbing type of patch, which can be utilized for the injection areas that you might be using and administering the medications, or even for if you're a difficult needle stick for blood draws, because we do know that you do get um, the blood draws frequently sometimes within your cycles. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and we will review all three of those. So what I first would like to say before we get into that first video of the Gonalef pen, and I do actually have a little pen here that's gonna be showing you this product in the video. Um, what I'll say about Gonalef is it's an FSH product, follicle stimulating hormone. And it is something that you usually take in the beginning part of the cycle to recruit follicles, which a follicle is a fluid filled little sac 
that an egg is maturing within. So the goal is to sometimes get multiple follicles within a cycle. And so that's the reason that you would be using this product. Um, Gonalef has come a long way. When I first started out, this product used to be little glass vial ampules that you had to snap open. And it was also sometimes considered more of an intramuscular shot. So although it's still an injection, it's been simplified. So you may know somebody that utilizes a pen, such as an EpiPen, or you may even know a diabetic that might be using their, um, before the, the day of pumps now, but before that they might be pen products. So it's really very compact, easy to use, user-friendly. And I think that's the key that I message that I would want you to know about your Gona Left pen. So I think without further ado, we'll have Craig bring up that video and we'll take a peek at what that Gona Left Ready Eject pen looks like. This medication video is to show you how to prepare and inject the Gona Left Ready Eject pen. First thing to let you know is if you be, are being prescribed the Gona Left pen, Mainly you're using that to help stimulate follicles or eggs, multiple follicles and eggs to grow throughout your cycle. So Gonalef is a stimulation medication and it contains the hormone of FSH, which is follicle stimulating hormone. So that's the big one that's responsible whether you're doing an insemination cycle or an IVF cycle, it's helping your body recruit and develop multiple eggs. Once again, I always like to ask uh, or mention first, the supplies that are needed for the Gonalef pen is one Gonalef Readyject pen and one small needle tip that's provided for you with your pen. Your pen will come in a box, a kit of its own, and the needle tips and the pen will be in there as well. Couple little uh, reminders about this medication is this medication is a, a, again a subcutaneous injection like some of the different medications for fertility. So it's administered in either the lower belly or the upper top outer thigh area. That's routinely where I know for me, our clinic, that's where we have us, our patients uh, injecting. So you always want to follow your clinic and your nurse's instructions, but routinely that medication is administered in that lower belly and those upper uh, outer side thigh area. So that's a subcutaneous shot. It's a, a little tiny needle. So again, you have an option where you could self-inject this medication or someone could administer it to you. There's no right or wrong. It's whatever works for you that helps you get through your cycle. So don't feel badly if you hear somebody else saying they give their own shots and you're not comfortable. We want you to always be comfortable with what you're doing in your cycle and for everybody that's different. So whether you'd like to self-inject or have somebody give you a shot, whatever it takes to help you through the process is most important. With your Gonalef pen, it may come from the pharmacy and it may suggest to keep it in the refrigerator. Uh, based on the manufacturer's um, description with this in terms of, of keeping it refrigerated, if you keep it refrigerated, it's good until the expiration date. If you keep it outside of the refrigerator, it's good for the expiration date or three months, whichever comes first. So either or is fine. Oftentimes we just tell patients to put it in the refrigerator because then that gives you the whole time frame and you don't have to worry about calculating. It's just good until that expiration date. Can I take it out of the fridge before injecting? And the answer to that is absolutely. You can put it on the counter for approximately 15 minutes or so. It just brings it up a little bit from that refrigerator temperature and makes it a little bit easier, a little less feeling that you might notice when you inject that liquid. Typically this medication will not sting, but you'll feel a little pinch with the needle. Um, and sometimes if that fluid's cool, you might feel that too. So certainly you can put it out on the counter and let it warm up a little bit before you inject. So for your supplies, we have the Gonalef pen. The first thing we do with that is we uncap this pen. And the next step is, it is sterile, guys, under there after the first time you use it, but it's just the nurse in me always has the habit of whenever I'm poking a needle into a surface, I clean the, that surface. So I'm cleaning the surface because I'm going to poke a needle in here. And the needle that I'm going to poke in comes with this product. It is a, a little needle tip. You just remove the little seal and then gently attach it. Don't over tighten because you are going to have to take that needle back off when you're done. So you don't want to over tighten too much hardly too hard so you just want to tighten it a little bit and then 
Next step is going to be to follow your clinic's instructions with your dosage. In here, what you will see is there is a little dial and there are some numbers. They are, right now it's on zero. What you would do is you would turn to whatever dosage your clinic tells you. So I'm just gonna turn this, and by the way, this dial can turn in either direction. So I'm gonna turn this dial and I'm just gonna simply set it to a dose of 150. So you might be able to see that in there, that it's a dose of 150. Again, that'll be determined by your clinic. Um, the other thing I'll mention with this just quickly is a lot of times patients say, when will I know if it's empty? When you give a dosage after you inject, the dial goes to zero. When that dial goes to zero, that means that you still have medicine in that pen. So put it in the fridge and use it for your next injection. The goal of this pen nicely is that it's already mixed and it's multi-dosed and you're gonna use it up until you're done. Eventually what may happen is when you turn your dial to your dose and you give an injection, if there is ever a number that is not a zero in that window after giving the shot, that's letting you know, hey, I couldn't give you that injection because I'm now empty. So you would discard this pen, open up and get a new pen with a new needle and turn the dial to whatever dose this one stopped at after you finished your injection. So if it stopped at a, a dosage of 50, then you would open a new pen and give just a 50, uh, a 50 unit dosage. The other thing I wanted to mention is that the um, pen is multi-dose. The needles are one-time use. You always only put a needle on, give an injection, and discard that needle into your sharps container that will be given and provided to you by the pharmacy. So the, the pen itself is multi-use, but not needles. Needles are one-time use, and then you discard, okay? Um, for injection technique for this one, like I said, just to show you that, it will go in either the belly or the upper thigh. So just to get our little mannequin here in the upper bell, uh, lower belly area, not upper belly because we have some muscle up there, and in our upper thigh, outer thigh area because we have some fatty tissue. So we want to avoid muscle. This is a fatty tissue shot. So if I were giving this mannequin an injection in her belly, I would have her possibly lay down like this and I would administer the needle to go straight in 90 degree this way, straight in 90 degree this way, or if I'm giving it in the side thigh, it's 90 degree this way. So that would be if she were laying down and I were administering. If she's self-administering and she's standing or sitting, she would be in this position. So what we would want to do to get ready is the first thing is uncap your pen with the big cap and save it, but turn it so that the part that's open is facing up on the counter. And then you'll see that there is a green color here on the tip. We get rid of that one. Don't try to put that back on. I've watched patients do that and they actually stab themselves and I don't want you to do that. So that one goes in regular trash, save the other one. And then what you're going to do is you have to clean that area of the belly so that it's good and clean for this injection. And just a little key with your shots, guys, and I'll show this with my arm, is when you're pinching the skin for a fatty shot, you want to give a gentle lift. If you squeeze really hard, you're going to bruise. So sometimes when patients come to me with bruising, I actually have them lift gently so that make sure that they're not squeezing so hard. It's just we're kind of nervous, so we squeeze a little harder, and then that can cause trauma to the skin. So it's this one, it's a gentle little squeeze. Again, we do not have to jab this needle. Just place it to the skin, give a little push. That needle goes all the way in. Once that needle's in, then you are going to push on the end of this pen and push all the way until you feel almost the pressure that you can't push anymore. And once you feel that, count to one, two, three, and let go. Then remove the needle in the same angle that it went in, set it down, and put a little cotton ball to that area. Wipe it if you need to. Usually you do not need to band-aid these areas because literally the bleeding stops very quickly. And you'll be able to touch the area after you've given the shot because you won't have felt anything other than the pinch of the needle, which is like a mosquito bite and usually you will not feel the medication going in. Now what I do is I take a look at that dial and I do have a zero in my window there. So that tells me that this pen has more medication. So what I'm going to do is I take the cap and I put that needle into that cap and I give it a little pinch and I twist that dirty needle off that I used. 
I discard it into a sharps container that I will have from the pharmacy. And I reattach the pen cap and the pen goes back into that refrigerator for your next use. So keep in mind, this medication is subcutaneous, meaning it's a little fatty shot in those thigh or belly. It contains FSH, which is the follicle stimulating hormone, which helps your body recruit and develop those multiple eggs, whether it be that you're doing this for insemination or for IVF. Hope this helped you with your gonalef and best of luck with that medication. Hi everybody, so hopefully that was not too bad, right? Um, as I said, that product has really, really come a long way and is far more friendly, patient friendly, I think, viewer friendly, um, being that everything is so compact and it's all provided together, those needle tips and the pens. And what I think is nice is that it's multiple use. So it's not like you're changing something each evening. Um, so those are some benefits. And I also feel like the, the fact that it's changed a lot in terms of the injection technique from a muscle shot to a subcutaneous shot is um, really, really important because um, it's a little bit easier and a little bit easier to tolerate. Um, so if we do have any questions, Craig, we can see if there's anything out there that I can help answer that might be um, a general question about the product. Yeah, hi, how's it going? All right, so we do have some questions and as we get started, I just want to remind everybody that, there we go, that's always helpful to not have a blocker on your screen. Hey, it's the internet, there you go, live I was like, where is he? <laughs> nice. uh, so we do have a couple of questions and one thing I just wanna remind everybody, if you were joining us via Zoom, you can definitely just go right into the Q&A section or the chat and either one of those and you can put your question in, we'll get it. Uh, if you are also joining us on Facebook, right into the Facebook live chat, you can join us there and we'll get to any questions you have. And that brings us to actually the first one here. So let me read this off okay. the screen. It says, okay, in your opinion, what is the best way to handle a situation where I won't have enough medication left in the pen for my complete shot? I know this comes up all the time, always something that we're uh, you know looking into and trying to figure out you know, patients want to know how do they handle the multiple, you know, multiple pens multiple situation. Um, usually what we, what we suggest is it's valuable to the patient to use every little drop that they get with your pen, the going to left pens, they do give you a little bit of what's called overfill. Um, and the reason that they do that is just so that you, as the um, new product user, you could have a little accident where you screw it a little bit out. And so each pen is, guaranteed to deliver a certain amount of medication. So if you do a little squirt, it's like, oops, you don't have to panic because they put a little extra in there and that can give you some sense of relief. So when it comes to this little bit of overfill, um, if you don't have enough, say when you, as I used in my example, I turn it to 150, I administer my injection and instead of there being a zero in that window, just say randomly it says 50, for example. That means that guess what? It didn't give me the full 150. It gave me 100. But now there's 50 that I did not get. So our recommendation usually is to tell the patient, now you would open up a brand new pen, discard that pen that said 50 on it. But you want to remember that dose because you're going to take a new pen, turn it to 50, put a new needle on and give a second little shot. And so that way there by using the extra that was the overfill, using it all the way up, you're not unnecessarily opening new pens too early. Um, I will add to this though, that I do have some patients that what they like to do, and so I'm gonna add it because I recently had this conversation with a patient is, she said, you know, what I did was when I saw that um, I, I did my math and I thought it was that I didn't have any more, but I saw there was a little more in there, I saved that pen and I opened up a brand new one. And that's not incorrect if you want to do that and you didn't wanna do, two shots in one night. Um, sometimes you might go back to using that little extra later on in the cycle. So I'm adding that little question uh, answer to that because that did come up very recently. So that's not wrong either. Um, you may never use the little bit of extra in that pen. So that's the only disadvantage, but we always try to encourage you to use, um, you know, every little drop if you can. 
Perfect. And that's a great, uh, great answer because you also touched on something that came up again in the chat. And this is something I know we've answered this, you've answered it on the show before, and, and you touched yeah. on it right there, but I think it's, it's worth delving a little bit deeper into. Mm -hmm. um, and so the question says, I understand how it helps me keep my costs down, but why is there any overfill in the pen at all? So maybe we can touch on actually a little yeah. bit of both of those parts because some yeah. people might, might not still understand how it, the overfill can actually help them keep their costs down, but then also just like you said, some of the technical reasons of why it exists in the first place. So with your Gonalev pens, there are three dosages. There are a 900 unit dosage, meaning a pen that delivers 900 units, a pen that delivers 450 units, and a pen that delivers 300 units. And depending upon your daily dosage with your clinic that has been developed based on you as a per person with your own history, your own background, your doctor will come up with a guesstimate daily dosage that they feel will work to achieve optimum results. And then your nurse will order a combination of those pens to equal that. So um, what I want you to know is that the, the benefit is, yes, the cost factor, because some people do pay out of pocket for their medications. And so, as I mentioned, instead of opening up another brand new pen, this way here, they can use every little drop they can with from that one pen um, and keeping costs down so that maybe they don't have to order even another new pen because they've been using that overfill. So that is a way to keep the cost. But the other factor is just when you do use up the pen dosage, you're just, like I said, you're getting the opportunity to use everything that that pen um, gives you. And even if it means that you're doing two injections, it's not the worst of things that happens because you may have had to open up that other pen at some point anyway. So, you know, the idea is that we just, we try very hard to help maximize what you get from these pens. And the and manufacturer is putting that little extra in there to reassure you that you won't lose out of that dosage of that pen. A 900 unit pen is a 900 unit pen, even if I squirt out a little bit by accident. And I think that that, as a patient, is just to help you not feel overwhelmed and nervous and scared that you, you know, that you've lost, oh my gosh, if I've lost a few drops, I've ruined my pen and, and whatnot, not at all. So I want that message to be relayed is that it's okay that we all could squirt out a little bit, even a nurse. It's just that we want you to know that your pen does deliver a specific amount, but it puts a little extra in there to help take care of those whoops if it happens. I love your reference to those whoops if they happen, just in case that's what we're here for is to help you get through the whoops, right? And that's actually the purpose of this entire program is really to help people get comfortable with all of the process of these different injections and how these medications work so that when it comes time for the actual you know, moment of truth and you're getting started, you've answered all your questions, you're now a pro, you feel great and you're ready to go. And so asking these types of questions, which we always like to remind people we get these questions all the time. So you're not alone in this. People are, are wondering a lot of the same thing. So thank you so much, Wanda, mm -hmm. for, for asking that or for answering that question. And one of the things that does remind me, if throughout the course of the uh, program, if you hear at home a question that you have like a follow-up question based on, feel free to jump in. Those are great. You know, maybe you thought you had knew, understood everything, but then Wanda gives an answer that, you know, motivates you to think of something new that you hadn't even thought of. You can get to any questions, even if we miss this first section on the on the Gonalef pen, you can bring those up throughout the course of the remainder of the program and Wanda will certainly answer them. We'll get through them. So speaking of great questions and great answers from Wanda, this is another one that you touched on a little bit uh, in, when you were talking just about uh, Gonalef and FSH in general, but it comes up every, every single show without failure. So it's good to know that people are thinking not just about like, how do I give the shot, but how do these medications work? And the question is, what does FSG do for the cycle? Is there a difference between gonalef and folistone that I should be aware of? That You're absolutely right. That does come up a lot for us in the clinics as well as nurses since we are working on ordering medications. Um, both gonalef pen and folistin pen contain the hormone of FSH. The difference really is that they're manufactured with different pharmaceutical companies. The pens look a little bit different. Um, and they might come in different strengths based on just what their manufacturer feels works best or what they've, you know, determined they would like to, how they would like to develop the product. But they are for us um, technically interchangeable, meaning that sometimes somebody may have had coverage with uh, an insurance plan for one 
that was a preferred medication for their prior insurance plan. And now their, their, their insurance has changed. And we're kind of coming up to that sometimes at the beginning of the new year with plans and changes. And I would just want to reassure you to know that those medications contain the same type of hormone, FSH. So even if you use false in one cycle, going to left another, the results really should not be different for you because the idea is that it's really dosage driven. It's more of the dosage that your body will need to get optimum results. So that's what's important. Um, sometimes for a patient that might be paying cash, so like a pharmacy like Mandel's, there might be some um, pro product promotions that are being offered for cash paying patients. So these are important things that we sort of investigate along the way or encourage our patients to investigate when they talk to the pharmacy, because that's really important. And we want to do whatever we can all around, whether it be Mandel's Pharmacy, the centers, we want to be there to be helpful with you in that process of ordering those medications and getting what you need. Um, so really that's the key is that the Folistim and the Gonalef are interchangeable. And also the main thing with both of them is that's a hormone that's naturally in our bodies, which typically the amount that we have circulating, we recruit one mature egg, usually in a natural cycle. And the goal with fertility cycles in terms of optimizing outcome is to be able to recruit multiple follicles. And so that's why you are being given that medication to take internally via the injection to increase the um, ovaries being exposed to that FSH and being able to then respond to that by creating um, and developing, I should say, recruiting multiple eggs within those ovaries. Thank you very much for answering. And I think, again, that question does come up quite often. A lot of times it is because people, A, want to know how to give the shots, but they also, mm -hmm. B, want to know what are all these different medications doing? Why am I taking them all? And um, this is a, that's a really great, uh, great way to understand what the different shots, specifically in this case, the FSH is doing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you can always be clear, you know, from, from the Mandel side of things as part of the kind of tr trinity of treating patients, we always include the patient, the clinic, and then the pharmacy in terms of making sure that we give the patient the best possible outcome. And we will always make sure that we do everything we can on the Mandel side to make sure that we are uh, looking out for the finances involved, the different promotions and possible discounts that are being offered by the manufacturers and things like that, and working in tandem with the clinics so that uh, everyone's on board with the with the product that's being dispensed and everyone knows that they're going to be getting a good, great quality product for a great price. And that's really what the, the focus of what we're trying to do as part of this, this teamwork approach that is happening in fertility right now. So thank you so much for that, Wanda. And mm -hmm. at this time, I do wanna say, uh, looks like we are, okay, let me just take, I'm flipping between a couple different screens. So let okay. me see. Yeah, so it does look like right now we are caught up with the questions. Cool. And so what I will do again, everybody don't, there's not a rush to get it in before, you know, we move on. You have the time to get your questions answered, but I will give another like 30 seconds or so just in case people have questions. So Wanda, I'll throw it back to you if there's anything you want to share as we're just giving people a little bit more time to get those questions into the system. Um, what I would just say too is that when your when your medications do come to you from the pharmacy, um, as I mentioned in the video, this is something that can be stored one of two ways depending upon what you want to do. But usually this will come with a little cool pack, um, and we are going into the cooler month. So just make sure that um, when you receive your box, don't feel afraid to open it. Definitely open up that box just as you would if it was something great. It's something great because it's going to help you so much with these cycles. And I feel like open up that box and get it organized, um, putting like items together. Even if you don't know what everything is yet and you're just starting out watching this video and you haven't opened that box yet, after this video, after tonight's talk, open it up and just organize like items. Um, you know, as we do that, that just helps you feel, you know, a little more um, organized going forward. And I think that's a big key is something that I would just mention is get those pens and organize them and put them all together in the fridge. Um, put it put together some other needles and syringes you might have, but definitely open your box if you haven't done so yet tonight before this video, feel free to do it afterwards and get yourself that little bit of organization that you can can do it. It goes a long way and I think helping um, feel less anxious, if you will. Absolutely. I think we should be reminding people that they should be treating that Mandel shipment box that comes to them the exact same way you would something from uh, from Amazon or or Hot Look, I see that comes to our house all the time. Got a great right? surprise! It's got a really nice little surprise in it. So we do. Go ahead we and do. Open it. 
There's some great <laughs> stuff in there that makes it just gives that that little extra kick that makes it uh, makes it exciting. And but, you always want to open it, you know, sooner just so you can get a chance. Because if you have a question, you want to make sure you can reach out to your nurse, you can reach out to your physician, you can reach out to the clinic with any questions, and you're not waiting to that last minute. So great point, Wanda. And with that being said, we are all caught up. Uh, okay. with questions. So for now, we will be get ready to move on to the next product. Okay. Um, the next product that we have online tonight to review with you is the HCG, which that can be a mouthful when you say it fully. It's human chorionic gonadotropin. Um, and the trade names, there are sometimes manufacturers, there's trade name Pregnil, that could be uh, one that you might have, or Novarel, um, or you just might have something that's a square little box similar to this size, you know, a little bit wider, but a little square box, and it'll say human chorionic gonadotropin on it, which is a generic version of that as well. It does not matter which one of those you have received. They are all um, similar products entirely. Um, and what you'll find is we want to go over that video in comparing it a little bit to what the Gonalef is, what I would want to, um, and what the Gonalef pen is. It's not a pen. Um, it's actually going to come in a couple little vials that are going to be inside of that box. And there will be a little mixing. So with this one, we need a little mixing. Um, it is also an intramuscular shot. And it is something that you don't take more than once. You typically take it one time within your cycle, usually, um, for the what we call a trigger shot. You usually take it once in that form for preparing for your retrieval or your uh, egg retrieval or your maybe an intrauterine insemination. So it's usually the big shot that might happen before those events. And that's what I think makes this a big deal or, or a big deal for patients. And they often really get a little nervous about it because it's also intramuscular. But I think you'll see when you watch this video um, that HCG can also be subcutaneous depending upon your clinic and your d dosage. So just know that it could be an intramuscular or a subcutaneous injection. Um, and I think that's it. Let's get to the video there, Craig, and we'll take a look at this one and see how it looks. Hi, everyone. The following video is here to show you the mixing and administration instructions for HCG. HCG stands for Human Chorionic Gonadotropin. Sometimes your pharmacy may have sent you a uh, box that has the name on it, Pregnil or Novarel, or it might say chorionic gonadotropin. Any one of those three varieties is your HCG injection. And typically this is administered to induce an ovulation. Sometimes it's called the trigger shot by your nurse or by your clinic. Um, when you're taking this, it's to, like I said, initiate an ovulation and you might be preparing for a procedure to follow such as an intrauterine insemination or an IVF egg retrieval. Your clinic will review specific mixing instructions for this medication, and they will review your dosage and the method of administration. For the video today, we will demonstrate that this medication can be given either as a subcutaneous injection, or it can be given as an intramuscular. If we use intramuscular, we'll demonstrate that we use the buttock muscle for that. And um, with the subcutaneous, I will show you that it goes in either the lower belly or upper thigh area. Some supplies that you're going to need to get started with this medication, just to give you a little list here, is going to be your box that will have HCG on there or Novarel Pregnil. You'll have one vial of HCG powder or tablet. So sometimes our lingo is some nurses will call it a powder or a tablet. Um, either way, that's the same. You'll have one vial of sterile bacteriostatic water. You'll need a 3cc milliliter syringe, one of those. And you will need two 22 gauge one and a half inch needles if you're doing intramuscular injection. If you're doing subcutaneous, you will be using one 22 gauge one and a half inch to mix the product. And then to inject it, you will be using a smaller needle that I'll demonstrate, but is a 27 or 30 gauge half inch needle, which is a tiny or shorter needle to go just into the fatty tissue. So it's always good to get your supplies together first. Then you can always wash your hands before you're getting ready to do this. Administering an injection is not a sterile technique, but it's always good to have clean hands when you're mixing the product. So what we'll first do is from our box, we will remove the two vials that we will have. One of those vials will have the powder in it. We'll simulate that with this one. 
there will be a little plastic cap on the top that you remove. And the other vial will have sterile water, which you can see sort of here that we have some water in this one. And you take the cap off, the little plastic cap off that as well. Another good idea to do is that you will use a alcohol prep pad if you have it or a cotton ball with alcohol and you'll just wipe the tops here with alcohol. It's just a good idea whenever you're poking a needle into a surface, whether it be skin or vial, to just clean the top of that as well with your alcohol. Your syringe that you'll have, the three milliliter syringe, may have the 22 one and a half inch needle already attached or then that needle might come separately. Either way, we would put that needle onto the syringe to get started. So we'll need the 3ml 3cc syringe with this 22 gauge one and a half inch needle for injecting. And what we will first be doing is I'm going to demonstrate a basic mixing method with this, but your clinic will review how much liquid to mix with and they'll give you specifics. But even seeing my way of mixing is going to give you what you need to know in terms of the mixing. So for the demonstration, what we'll do is we'll mix with one ml, one cc. So what we do is we draw down the plunger and we draw up a little air. And then we uncap the needle and we first take our vial of sterile water and we're gonna inject a little air into that because there's a little pressure in that vial. So it's nice to kind of equalize that little bit of that pressure in there with entering a little bit of air into it first. If you forget this step, I don't want you to worry, but I just want you to know it's something that we can do because as I let go of that plunger, it sort of has a little mind of its own and it's moving. But then what happens is eventually that'll all stop and I will be able to have full control over what I'm drawing up. So in this case, we're gonna draw down that plunger rim to the number one ml, one cc. Once we remove that needle, this is extra fluid that you do not need to keep around and you can put it safely into regular trash because um, there's been no blood contact with it, so you don't have to put it in your sharps container. Then we're gonna take this, the sterile fluid that we've drawn up and insert it into the powder tablet, wafer, however you wanna refer to that powdered vial and inject all that fluid in there. At first it'll be cloudy, but then just keep that needle in there. And what you're gonna do with that needle while it's in there is just roll around gently. It takes a few minutes to do this step, but just let it take, don't rush it. Um, you just don't wanna shake vigorously and create a lot, of, a lot of bubbles with it. If you can, you wanna kind of minimize all that bubbling effect. Once you see that it looks pretty clear in there, the next step is to turn the vial, or some people say invert the vial upside down. The next little cue that I always give to everybody is make sure to move that needle down as low as you can without having it fall out. Because then what you're going to do is pull back on the plunger and drain every little drop that you pushed into that vial. So one ml went in, one ml is what should come out. If you're slightly under it, is that okay? Absolutely. But if you're at a half, go back in because that means you'll have the other half still left in the vial. So what went into that vial, the 1 ml, as close to that is what you want to remove from that vial, that 1 ml. Then this vial here will once again, this is also going to now be empty because we've drained everything. So this can go into regular trash and you don't have to put it into a biohazard container. And then you cap the needle that you've been working with for mixing. Here's where there'll be two differences and I'll show the intramuscular shot first. After we have our ready mixed vial here, I mean a syringe, we're going to remove this 22 gauge one and a half inch needle and discard. And we could open a new package with a 22 gauge one and a half inch needle that we'll borrow from that new package. In this case, we would simply not use the syringe that came with it, but take the brand fresh new needle that's nice and sterile because that's gonna mean that's gonna be good for your injection. This would be the needle that is used for a buttock muscle injection. If I were doing a subcutaneous injection on the advice of my clinic, which they will let you know, and that would be something going into the belly or the upper thigh, then you would be using a much smaller needle. So the only step that would be different is I'm just going to take this off for a second and set it down. The only step that would be different is after mixing, I would then attach the very small needle to get ready for preparation of the injection. So we'll put that one back in to that packet and I'll come back to that. But I just wanted you to see that the mixing needle is a longer needle so it goes in those vials and then you may be switching to a new 
needle that's longer for a muscle shot or a smaller needle that might be for that subcutaneous injection. And I'll just move everything away here. And what we're gonna do is, this is an injection if we're showing and demonstrating the muscle shot first. Typically your nurses in clinic may have drawn some circles on the upper outer quadrant of the buttocks. Just to show this side here, it's just to show you that the needle's going into that red area. So we're kind of not doing a subcutaneous, which is the fatty tissue, but we're doing into that muscle that's that glute muscle. And that's a nice big muscle um, for that. So a lot of times some people have asked if they can do this in the leg. It's usually preferred to give it here because this is a non-weight bearing muscle. So we sort of would avoid sometimes doing the quadricep or the deltoid of the arm because that's a small muscle. So often you'll see that your clinic centers may be circling this area for you to administer this trigger shot. If somebody, it's recommended with this one, if somebody can to be administering this to you. And if you were to choose to stand for the injection, what I would do is if I was getting the injection in my right glute, I would stand with all my weight on the left side and I could lean a little bit just so that I'm not wobbling, I could put down my, my right foot and that person would have a nice relaxed muscle to administer that injection into my right glute. However, if you would like, you could lay down simply, and if I have this mannequin and she were laying down here and I was administering the injection, then by having her lay on her side and I'm administering the shot right here, the muscle's already relaxed. So either way is fine. There is no right or wrong way of standing or lying down. It's just whatever works for you, and that's what we would always want you to do is whatever works for you. Some people ask if they can put a little ice to the area. For this injection, a lot of the clinics might say it's okay to put a little ice to numb the surface because you are going a little deeper and that will not interfere with absorption. Or your clinic may be working with you and may have ordered you some Sonera patches, which is a type of numbing patch that you would apply about 20 to 30 minutes before this injection and then remove it to then administer the injection. So if you don't have the patch, it's certainly okay to sometimes with your clinics okay use a little ice just to numb it. Um, if you didn't ice, what I will say is that a lot of times by now you've had several blood draws from your arm. The pinch that you could feel a little bit here is just like a blood draw, even a lot less because it's, it's not going into a vein, it's just going into your muscle. So I wanna give you confidence to know that not to worry about the um, needle going in because you've experienced that already with those blood draws. With this, when you, after you do the icing or if you use a patch, what you're going to do is clean the area with a little alcohol, and then you're not going to pinch the skin. We need to leave it just as is because we want to get that needle right into the muscle. So the angle that you might see me holding this might look like a slight 45 degree angle to you, and your other hand could be here, whatever, wherever you position it that's comfortable for the person giving it. But a slight little angle, so I'm not pointing the needle down toward the floor, and I'm not parallel to the floor. It's a nice little angle so that's going into the muscle. We don't need to jab with this. If you do see that you have a little bubble in here or a little air bubble, is that something you want to address? You can give a little flick to the syringe. It usually rises that bubble up to the top. But if it's a real tiny one, I don't want you to worry either because you're not using this into a vein. And that's when we re really want to look for air bubbles. For a muscle shot, it's okay if you had a very small bubble there that just can't be moved. And I can even have that happen to me as well. So it's, it's okay to flick at that to release it. But if it doesn't release, it's certainly okay to proceed with your injection. When you're doing this, like I said, it's a nice gentle angle in and a nice insertion. We do not need to jab. So you place the needle to the skin and then give a little gentle push. If you iced or used Sonera, you might not feel anything at that point. If you didn't ice or Sonera, you might feel just a slight pinch to that skin, sort of like a blood draw when that needle goes in. The next step is to hold this needle in place and pull back lightly, gently, not a lot, not very far on the plunger. Why we're doing that is we're just checking to see if any blood enters the syringe. If you've had these areas drawn, it's very unlikely that you will enter a, a little vest or a little vein, that's the reason for this check. So I wanna reassure you that it's not very common to happen, but when you pull back, if you were to see blood enter here, clinics might do different things, so you follow their instruction, but what we would do is either remove the needle completely, if we see a little blood enter, put a little Band-Aid here, change the needle and go to the other side to reattempt, or the other way you could handle it is if you see a little blood, you could pull the needle away from the skin, approximately a half an inch, 
check again, and if no further bleeding enters, then you could just inject. Either way is, is how you'll be instructed with your nurse's help in your clinic, but that's just addressing that if you do see blood, you don't want to insert the medication. You want to hold off and reposition or remove it and go to the other side and reattempt. Either way, eventually you will get to the point where you're not going to see any blood and you probably won't even see it the first time. And then you'll just inject nicely that fluid, let it all go in, can do a little count of one, two, three, remove the angle, remove the needle at the same angle as going in, set it down. And then you just put a little cotton ball there. A little bit of blood will come out, a little bit of the fluid, not a lot. It'll only take 10 seconds of holding this here, not even. And then you might have it where it will stop and it'll have a little pinprick there. And you can apply a Band-Aid if you need to. Just remember you have that there. Don't forget because it's in the back of your body. Just because Band-Aids, even if you don't have an allergy, sometimes can get a little, you might get a little irritated from that. So you just want to be able to know you don't have to leave a Band-Aid on for 24 hours or anything like that. Just for the quick 10 or 15 minutes and then you can remove it. Um, if this injection is being instructed by your clinic to take it as a subcutaneous injection, then what you want to know with that is the areas typically that they will reference for you is going to be in the lower abdomen and the top upper or side outer thigh area because it wants to be in any area that where you can pinch a little fat. So using my arm for that, I'm pinching a little bit of fatty tissue off of the muscle. And when you do that pinching, just do a little gentle lift. You don't have to squeeze too hard so that you're not traumatizing your skin by squeezing so hard. You could, with that little shot, uh, subcutaneous injection, you could administer that to yourself, or you could have someone administer that to you. So that's an option. The intramuscular, it's usually recommended if you have someone that can give you that shot, it would be preferred. But with this injection, if you felt comfortable, you could self-administer, or you could have somebody give you the injection. If somebody were to have someone else give them this injection, I usually sometimes recommend that the patient could lay down and you would administer it into her belly this way because it's a 90 degree angle or you could administer it into the top thigh this way or if we're doing the side thigh then the 90 degree angle to the side thigh is administering it like this. So it's a 90 degree angle and if you're getting the shot given to you then you could lay down. If you are administering the shot to yourself then you would be in a position of where you could stand or sit and you would be giving this straight into your belly, straight into the top thigh, and bring it into the side thigh to the side area, like we showed earlier, a little bit of that side thigh. So again, the angle for this one is a straight in, but it's a smaller needle just going half an inch into the fatty tissue. So if we demonstrate that one, if somebody were self-injecting, question might get asked, can I put a little ice here? Um, you could, but it sometimes is recommended if you're going to do anything here, maybe to use one of the numbing patches if you have that option, that that's ordered for you. But even if you don't have the numbing patch ordered, recommendation is you don't really have to ice these. It's such a tiny needle. You may not even barely feel it. Um, at most, it might feel like a mosquito bite. We all know how that feels. It's a very quick fleeting pinch. The reason sometimes we recommend refraining from icing with the smaller shots is that you don't want to constrict blood flow. Blood flow needs to be open in the little uh, capillaries to help that medicine to be delivered to where it needs to go. So the idea here is just we don't want to interfere with that. The numbing patch won't interfere with that, but the ice, if you leave it on too long, could. So it's best to just know that you really don't need the numbing pre uh, the ice for this. And oftentimes patients, when I do demonstrate this, they will let me know afterwards that it really wasn't as bad. And I was right that it, it, it felt like a pinch or nothing at all. So I want to reassure you all of the same thing, that it really is something that you won't notice very much when the needle goes in because it's so fine, that needle. This time, we do need to give a little pinch to the fatty tissue. So what you want to know with that is you're giving a gentle little squeeze to the skin. Like I said, not a harsh squeeze. You uncap your needle. And then when you have that little pinch of fat, you place the needle right to the skin and just give a gentle little push. Once it's all the way in, you can then push the medication in, nice and gentle. Count one, two, three. Remove the needle, same angle as going in. Let it out. And then put a little pressure there. Here, if you'd like to Band-Aid, you usually don't, though. If anything, you might see a little clear fluid come out of this opening. So that's the medicine. So we want to make sure we put a little pressure and keep it there, keep it inside the body. But usually not needing to have to do anything with any sort of Band-Aids um, or anything like that. 
And then with all of your medications, after you are done with them, when you have this dirty needle and syringe, it goes into that sharps container. So there is no leftover with trigger HCG. Everything you typically mix is going to then be utilized for that evening, that day or that evening or that morning, whatever time you're taking this. Your clinic will give you specifics with when you're taking it, how much water you're mixing with. Today's demo was to just show you the, the demo of mixing and we use one ML, one CC, but you might use more, you might use less or, and or you will absolutely be instructed whether you're taking it as a belly shot or thigh shot, little tiny injection, or whether it will be in the muscle. So I do hope this video has helped you. If you've gotten to this point, I know you have good things ahead and um, we congratulate you on getting to this point of a trigger shot and best of luck to you with the rest of your cycle. And we'll see you back here for some future videos. So that's a lot with that one. And as I will say, uh, congratulations if you are at the point of taking this injection, um, because it means you've worked really hard up to this injection and you've conquered probably a lot of fears about injecting medications, maybe self-injecting. And you have one more um, kind of peak to the cycle right prior to the procedure. So um, HCG, I will reassure you is something that the clinics take very seriously, the nurses do, the doctors do. So there is a fair amount of sometimes even um, dedicated time um, with instructing you on this medication, whether it be through sending you um, additional written materials. I know we do that. Um, we provide you with some HCG written instructions, the mixing written instructions. So along with this video system and the clinics really working hard to draw circles if you're doing this intramuscularly, I want to reassure you that although it can seem very nerve wracking because it's the big, big day, it's we do our best at, as a clinic, um, as most clinics do, to want to get you as much information as we can, whether it's visual learning, whether it's reading a pamphlet or reading a flyer to talk about the medication and the mixing. So, Craig, I don't know if we have some further questions on that medication of HCG or trigger. Yeah, actually, so we got a bunch of questions, uh, and we typically do get a bunch of questions for uh, when, when we're talking about HCG, just because of the 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 uh, the manner of the medication and the way it's given. And one of the things that uh, came in was uh, so based on what you talked about intramuscularly, it says how dangerous is it if my partner misses the large muscle? Probably going to be hard because you just used a good word there, large. <laughs> the muscle is large. So I can be honest with you in 25 plus years of experience and teaching at this point, hundreds of couples on this injection. I, I very, very rarely have had issues as a nurse with um, this medication being given incorrectly by a partner. Um, but if you ever feel like you are concerned about an injection in the evening or after when you're giving it, what I can say is that evening, Oftentimes, like our clinic and other clinics around the nation, there usually is sometimes maybe an on-call physician or nurse um, that can answer a question if it's at that moment. Um, usually it's through the emergency line because that's something that could be considered an emergency if it's an HCG shot and you're at all worried. So just wanting to let you know, it is sometimes okay to contact your fertility center that evening. And sometimes we can see you maybe in the office the next day if you're concerned about where it went. Um, but I know for me personally, as a nurse in the field, very, very rarely have I had issues with partners missing a muscle. Great. No, thank you. And I think, like we said, a lot of this is just to put people's mind at ease when they're going through this process and feeling comfortable throughout. And one of the things that we want to remind everyone, I know, Wanda, you mentioned it before, that all of these videos, not just these full videos with the Q&A, but even just the individual uh, product videos are all available on our website. And part of the benefit of that is that you can go to mymandels.com. You can pick on the individual uh, product that you want. And so right before that moment of truth, when you have to give that shot, you can sit through and click on Wanda's walkthrough and get a chance to really absorb everything you, you need to know so that you feel comfortable and give you that last little bit of uh, of confidence you need to be able to get make sure that you're going to do it right. So that's what we're here for is to not you know, if there is anyone at home who's frantically scribbling notes down and writing like that, and you you have a you have pages on the sticky notes on the wall, like my office looks like, do not <laughs> feel like you have to do that. That's what we're here for, is so that you can 
on demand. Go back and check it out when you need to and be comfortable with that. So thank you so much, Wanda. That was a great answer. Um, this question just came in that says, so is there a big difference between HCG and Avidrill? Why not just stick with the pre-mixed? Um, it's going to, to be, going to depend on your clinic. Um, I have had experience working at multiple different clinics and some clinics do things differently than others. And so there's not really necessarily considerable differences other than the way the product, if it's pre-mixed, um, the, the dosage is really the key with HCG. It's, it's really best to, for you to understand that with every clinic, with every patient, it's a tailored cycle. So, you know, we are looking at your response and there may be reasons why one of these products may be preferred for you because something might be better at able to let you release all those follicles that you've developed. Some people might need a little slightly higher dosage of the HCG for that. Um, and that might be sometimes why we don't want to utilize a premix. Um, or it might be that somebody can have a little bit of a lower dose that's needed for their indu induction of ovulation. So one thing I will just say is this medication, whether it's a premixed variety or a mixed variety, the goal of it is to finish the final maturation step of your egg recruitment, finishing the final maturation of those eggs, and also to help those eggs prepare for an ovulation. And so although we're all the same wanting to do that within our different cycles of IVF or insemination, intruder insemination, how you do that might be slightly different based on each of us differently. So I know I would like to be at a clinic that's really looking at me, Wanda, the patient, and not just putting me um, a blanket drug that, that everybody's taking. I mean, certainly there are times that some of us might all be very similar situations potentially. So we might be on a, a similar drug, but there are other times that it's not the case and you are really working with the individual. And that's the reason for the differences at times. That's a great answer. Thank you so much. Obviously why we put these programs together is to be here to answer your questions and not just the questions that, you know, everyone else asks and you just Google and try to find those answers on the internet. This is a place where you can come and specifically understand what, what, you know, matters to you and what is important to you. And we're here to try to answer that. So Thank you very much, Wanda, for, for for really kind of bringing that part of of what the whole VLE experience is supposed to be about is to kind of personalize it to the questions. Um, yeah. So this, I, and you talked about it even in that answer right there, but uh, this came up about five or six different ways. Uh, the concept of like, what do you mean by trigger shot, or how does HCG work within my cycle, or what is the purpose of HCG? Like I said, I know you you did touch on that both in the video and even just in the last answer, but maybe if you just had to kind of really, you know, bring it to the, the most basic level that you have of just explaining the purpose of HCG and why people are on it, just so that anyone who might have any last bit questions about it can understand what's going on. Something I've even been taught as a fertility nurse from even our physicians that we work with, because we learn from them as well as medical professionals, is when you guys are going in for your ultrasounds and you see a little follicular uh, follicle. It's darker inside because there's fluid and then you have the, the roundness or it could be misshapen a little bit because as they get bigger, they kind of squish each other in there for lack of a better word. So what happens there is oftentimes the egg is attached to the wall of the follicle and it's growing and it's maturing over time and it can take anywhere from a week to 12 days, give or take. Again, you might need less time, more time. But ultimately when you're taking that HCG, what's happening or that ovulatory drug such as uh, HCG, Pregnil, Novorel, or even somebody brought up the, uh, the premix. Um, what it's doing is it's letting that, that egg fully finish its maturation, which is microscopic by the way, it's, you can't see that with an ultrasound. And then the ovulation induction releases that egg into the follicle. And for IVF, it's bathing around in the fluid and when they go in and do an egg retrieval, they're extracting the fluid and they find under a microscope in the fluid, the egg. So by you taking that HCG, it's helping release and pull that egg away from the uh, wall of the follicle and letting it float as a little cell in that follicular fluid. If you're doing this with insemination, what happens is that roughly that follicular fluid and that follicle will fully erupt and release. And then the little 
fimbria, as we call it, at the end of that um, fallopian tube pulls that egg into the fallopian tube and that's where fertilization occurs in a, in a um, insemination cycle. So just to give you a little visual or a little commentary on that, the real reason is final maturation, preparing you for an induction of ovulation because you've recruited multiple eggs and you need something that's gonna give a real boost when you have multiple eggs to fully get you prepared for the IVF retrieval or an intrauterine insemination. Great, thank you very much. And obviously we, like we said before, if anyone has any questions based on that answer, feel free to jump in. But I do think that was, that was a great way to really explain it so that people understand what's happening throughout the process and why that, you know, why that product is so important. Um, and actually probably does lead a little bit into the, uh, this next question that I see mm -hmm. that says, so how much wiggle room do I have with the exact timing of the shot? The timing of your shot for an intrauterine insemination, if you're combining this type of injection with that, there usually will be a range of time. Your, your clinic will give you maybe a two hour, three hour window in the maybe in the evening to take that injection. So you have a little more wiggle room with it if you're doing it for intrauterine insemination. The reason why it's a little more timed and pinpointed is an egg retrieval when you're doing that for IVF is a timed procedure that you are going under anesthesia. So they want to make sure that the, the peak of that ovulatory peak action of that drug is when we're going in and, and sedating the woman to do an egg retrieval. So sometimes each of the clinics will say, you might have a few minutes, give or take, but if you go beyond you know, 15, 20, half an hour, another hour, big thing I would just say in my clinic that I can say is that we do one retrieval at a time. So your time is being given to you because there's no other person that shares that time. So when you take your HCG, it is being, it is working with the time of your retrieval. So your HCG's time is also only your time. Nobody else is giving it at that time. So if you take your HCG an hour later, you might be bumping and taking that at somebody else's time. So it's just important to know the trigger, there's not a lot of wiggle room with it, but if you have any issues that are coming up and you have a question about that in the evening while you're taking it, again, that would probably be a message to contact your center even after hours if they happen to have an emergency line, just so we can be aware. We can always help and work to correct issues if we're aware of them. Absolutely. That's a great, that's a great uh, way to kind of really make you understand that, that there's a reason why when, when your office is telling you a specific time, uh, it's not a, it's not a uh, generalization. It's more of a, you should probably stick to that time. So yeah. thank you for, for helping out also for people to realize that life gets in the way sometimes. And we understand mm -hmm. that. And that's why there are you know people on hand for you to reach out to uh, and share that information. But as soon as you know, something is there, right, it's best to, to reach out immediately so that you have some time to be able to plan around that. So awesome. Okay. Great questions. Great questions coming in. Um, Okay, so here comes one that says, uh, and we've actually, I know we talked about this before, uh, does the amount or consistency of the powder that I receive in the vial have any impact on the shot itself? Usually not. Um, each product provider manufacturer, there could be a shift in, in just the transporting of it when that's shipping from the manufacturer or the pharmaceutical company. Um, but again, that's why I use the terminology that it could be, we, we use powder, we might sometimes say wafer. Um, we might even sometimes say tablet because sometimes when you'll look in that vial that is we call powder, it could look like almost confectionery sugar. It looks like little, little tiny granules. Sometimes you might look in there and I said wafer for those of us you know, who might go to a um, Sunday Catholic mass and might receive a little wafer. Uh, it's almost a little bit thicker than that, but it's, it looks a little more solid. Um, or honestly, if you um, are taking like a little cert or something like that, like an actual tablet of Tylenol, if it, the old white tablet Tylenol, if that were dropped in a vial, it could look like that. So the consistencies can vary based on the manufacturers, just in how they uh, provide the product and how they, with that powder, what it looks like. But the idea is that there should be a water vial and a vial that contains either a powder, white wafer, a tablet, and it doesn't matter what that looks like that's just driven by the manufacturer and it could shift a little bit and crumble up a little bit. And that's no problem because you're simply pushing the water in to dilute it anyway. 
So the consistency of it shouldn't be affecting for you um, anything in terms of the um, shot itself. So great add that to the list of things that we have just taken off of people's minds of things to be worried about is to not have to necessarily, uh, you know, be stressing about the way it looks. It's it's for a reason like that and it's going to work. So thank you very much. I wanted to see. We're knocking down barriers left and right for people to feel comfortable about this whole process. So you know, exactly. this is, as we were talking about before, sometimes people have questions that are like uh, add-ons to questions they already heard an answer from. And so the question says, after hearing your que your answer regarding the timing of the shot, what does my clinic mean when they say they're going to be batching their patients? A little bit more generalized Batch. question, but yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm not sure. Um, it depends. I, I can't answer that for our clinic in terms of batching patients for anything. Um, we typically are using and doing one retrieval at a time. Um, the only thing I can say sometimes is that we we would like to try to make sure we are open every day. We do retrievals on weekends. I think I get asked that question a lot. And most IVF centers do weekends. It's not really a we're trying to avoid weekends. We can be m much busier on a Saturday and Sunday, maybe even then a Tuesday during the week. So I wouldn't the days of the week to us as a clinic don't really matter in terms of that. Um, in terms of batching, I'm not really sure what the clinic is referencing to that. All I can say is maybe in your clinic, there might have a um, limit on the number of patients that start on a potentially given day because they are projecting ahead to know like a range of time where the, the retrievals might take place and they want to be within reasonable uh, expectations for their embryology lab to maintain that they don't go over and have an astronomical number of retrievals given in one in one day. Um, you know, embryology is a very focused in very intent um, part of the sometimes the unsung heroes because they're behind the scenes, not usually sitting here and they're not usually often talking to patients. But boy, to me, they're the unsung heroes that are behind any practice because they are working diligently with those cells and um, which takes intense concentration. And so as you can imagine, sometimes you might want to make sure that you're not having an overwhelmingly number, number of patients that might need the same day for retrieval. Because the idea is that we have to be flexible um, and whenever your body is ready, that's really the best day. So we, we don't manipulate our cycles whereby we pick which day we want to do your retrieval your body decides for us which day we want to do that retrieval. Um, but sometimes there might be maybe where it's talking about start dates and maybe controlling the number of starts in a day. That, that may be it. But I, I, in terms of my clinic, I can't talk about or, or really answer for what batching might mean. No, that's great. Thank you so much, Wanda. And I think it's, it's a little bit more of an open-ended question. And so that's some of the times when we do say, um, we, we'll always try to answer anything we can here on the, on the program, but if we can't yeah. get to something or we don't actually have, um, an answer because it's more specific to your individual clinic, we always recommend that you get a chance to, you know, reach out, pick up the phone, call your clinic, or when next time you have a telehealth appointment yeah. or you're going in to see them, perfect opportunity to ask them one of those questions. And, uh, and then we'd love to hear, you can always come back and share with us on another program, what uh, feedback you got as well. So that's, that's always a great part of the program, hearing from people who have gone through it as well. So it seems- I think too, just to oh, add to this yep. though, might be even that maybe this term came up for somebody in their clinic with COVID, I, I don't know, but just we're all trying to be really safe with our, with our COVID protocols. Um, as you can imagine. So that means safety across the board for patients, for the um, office personnel and protecting our laboratories. And that's all in, and even, you know, pharmacies doing everything as well on their ends. So I think it's maybe could be related to that just far part of part of COVID with being safe, safety first. Yeah, absolutely. I think for any patient, just for you to know, if you walk into a clinic right now versus if you had gone in a year ago, or mm -hmm. if you have a friend or a family member who has gone through it before, uh, you'd be noticing some substantial differences or hearing about substantial differences all there for your protection and for your safety and for the safety of the staff and the clinic and everything like that. Um, even at the pharmacy level, same deal. So mm -hmm. 
uh, it's it's just it's interesting to know that how the impact is having on everybody and the way it's impacting even down to our treatments for uh, you know for IVF. So great mm-hmm. answer, thank you so much. And and with that being said, we are all caught up. I'm looking real quick okay. to see. Yep, no more questions right now. So uh, again, if you do think of any other questions or any follow ups based on this, you can ask it after the next product. But uh, right now, we are ready to jump over into the next product whenever you are. Okay. So the next products that we're going to review is a product, I have a little flyer here, um, is Sonera. And it is a type of numbing patch. um, And it is something that maybe you would be interested in discussing with your clinic, um, your nurse, your doctor team. Um, And it can be used for the needle stick area if you're somebody that has some difficulties with blood draws. And we know that we do numerous blood draws with these types of cycles or even potentially be used for um, your injection sites if you feel like this would be helpful. We want to do whatever we can to get you through your cycles comfortably. And uh, Sonera is a nice alternative to help alleviate any fears. We wouldn't want needle phobia, needle fears to get in the way of anybody um, doing what they can to help build a family. So we can go ahead and uh, Craig, if you want to start that video. Hi everyone, this video is to give you some instruction for using a numbing patch that's available to you um, if you have difficulties with having shots administered and you're very concerned, or sometimes some people have a tough time getting their blood drawn. And this can be a useful patch um, to have your center call into the pharmacy and um, the pharmacy will check and see what your coverage is for it. But the idea with the patch is to just to give you another option of something that might help you in um, alleviating any fears about blood draws or medication administration. So this medication is called Sonera. It comes in a box that will look like this. Oops, pardon me, let me put it the right way. And then there are, I believe, 10 patches in here um, per box. Each patch is a one-time use, so you don't reuse the product. Once you apply it, kind of think of a Band-Aid. You apply a Band-Aid and it might get soiled after you discard it. So each patch is a uh, one-time usage patch. And so when you are applying this to have either a blood draw, okay, or to an area that might be getting injections, which sometimes for fertility mainly could be the the buttock area. Some people might want to apply it for the little uh, area shots that are in the belly or the upper thigh. Um, But once you get the okay and you have a prescription that does get called in for you, what you want to know is, you know, make sure that the skin area that you're putting this on is not having any cuts or any abrasions or anything that's an open wound. You want it to be clean skin, but you definitely want to make sure that you have no no cuts or abrasions or anything like that on those areas. So you would clean the skin um, first and foremost. And what you'll see is the patches come in a packet and you will open up that foil pouch and you'll remove the patch and place it with the foil side up. Um, What you'll find here is there is a little sticky, I should say there's a little sticky area here that I will pull off and then there's a little a harder plastic area. The when this goes on is typically 20 to 30 minutes prior to getting a blood draw or getting a medication administered. So you want to apply it to that area. Careful that you don't touch the area that has, you'll notice that there's some little dots in here where it breathes, the Band-Aid. But once I remove this, like a lot of times, even Band-Aids that might have a little bit of medicated neosporin already in them or whatever. You don't want to touch that area. So same with this is that you don't want to touch that area and then you peel it back and off. And so that's the, this is the part that's going to stick to the body. And then just for the sake of my demonstration, what I'll do is I'll grab my mannequin that I have. And if we were going to have her, you know, for her muscle shot, utilize this, we would take the foil side down, not touching it, and apply it 20 to 30 minutes before where she's going to get her injection. And she would leave it on, or she would apply it, I should say. She would apply it to that area, leave it on there for 20 to 30 minutes, 
and then remove it prior to the injection. When you do go to remove this, what I want you to be careful of again is not touching the inner aspects, that silver part. And so in order for that to be safe for you from animals, from ch other children or anybody, is your packaging, what's nice is you can just apply it to that packaging and then discard. So save the little, the outer foil pouch to be able to uh, utilize that for discarding your um, patch safely. So there's a bit of numbing cream, lidocaine, there's a little bit in here. Um, and what those, like I said, those numbing agents can be helpful for some people who maybe really have a potential needle phobia, very concerned about their injections, um, uh, even, you know, might be a little bit of a difficult blood stick. So this is something that you can always um, talk and discuss with your fertility clinic, your nurse, your team, and let them know your concerns. Because I think all of us would agree that we want you to be able to get through your cycle. We want to do everything we can to empower you to feel comfortable. And um, so if this is something that is going to help you to make that next step and take that next step to the um, fertility journey, then we want you to know there's some things out there for you that can help. Thank you again and best of luck on your journey with your fertility cycle. So as you can see, there are some nice products that are out there um, that we could as providers maybe take a peek at for you on an individual basis to be able to assist with either the injection technique or also areas of where you might have a needle stick. Um, I think it's pretty simple and straightforward, but obviously there could be some still some questions out there after watching that video. So Craig, if there's any questions, if you want to join me, we can see what might be asked out there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this question came in a, a couple a couple different times, but uh, you had talked about the way the shirt, the, the way the patch works and mm -hmm. a question that says, uh, if I wear a long sleeve shirt covering the patch, will it not work? Does it need to be totally exposed? And this question came in also like if I wear long jeans over it. So there was a couple different uh, variations of it. So just how that works. Um, basically with the patch, um, what you want to know is once you apply it, you can certainly wear pants, you can wear a long sleeve shirt while you're waiting for it to work and, and um, do its thing. The only thing that is recommended by the makers of Sonera is to not put any sort of compression. Uh, just for example, like if somebody would have put an ACE for whatever reason, maybe an ACE bandage or another bandage over that area, what you would see, and it's hard to maybe see it up close here, but when you have that product, there are some um, bent, almost little holes at the top of it. Um, and so those areas allow for the oxygen to kind of go into that patch. It works with that. So the numbing and the warming elements that are part of, of that product, it is using that flow, if you will, of the air. So wearing clothing and such doesn't constrict it. But if you were to then apply something else over that, that you would want to not do. Perfect. Thank you. And then um, a little bit, a little bit different actually, but a question kind of similar, similar idea of just the, the way it is used. Question says, can I use the Sonera after the injection? If so, is there any danger of overdosing if I leave it on too long or forget to take it off? The benefit to you getting the maximum effect of the product is absolutely to use it before, before the injection and before a blood draw. So really, you wouldn't want to wait till after, okay? So definitely use it beforehand. And the average amount of time is 20 to 30 minutes beforehand. And that's just because they've studied the medication to take a look at it. Um, if you leave it, leave it on a little bit extra time, it's not a problem. It's just recommended set a timer for maybe 30 minutes at most. But if you went a little bit over that, is there a problem? No, they have looked at having studied this. And they in their study, they increased the dosage by four times and the amount of time, doubled the amount of time that it was left on, say 60 minutes versus 30. And there wasn't any um, issues that, that really were worrisome at all if it were left on a little bit. So extra, but really the main thing is you wanna follow with anything, the manufacturer's recommendations to get the optimal um, benefits of the drug. That's the key with any of this is to follow manufacturers. And that's what we go along with as pharmacies as well as nurses and clinics. So we would go with that and say, put it on before 30, 20 to 30 minutes, 
if life gets in the way, don't panic. If you left it on a little longer, absolutely, it's okay. Just don't additionally cover it. You can wear your clothing. That's fine. But um, those are good tips and good questions with that. Perfect. And I think with that being said, as of right now, we are we're, we're all caught up with all the questions. I do think this one, that tends to be the bigger questions are if I put it on before or after, if I leave it on too long. Um, and then everyone's like, okay, it's a patch. I get it. So I, I think that we've gotten through most of those. Of course, if you have any other questions or anything that Wanda just said made you think of something else, feel free, please, to jump in there. Obviously, there's a chance now if you have any questions about any of the three products we talked about tonight or anything just in general about your uh, about your cycle that are the pressing topics on your mind, you can feel free to ask that. But um, with that being said, we are all caught up right now, Wanda. So I will throw it over to you. If there's anything else you want to say while we give people maybe another 30 seconds or so to get any questions in that they have about any of the products we talked about tonight. Okay. Um, just, well, a final reminder that Craig said a couple times is we are here live, uh, Facebook live, Zoom live um, each evening, Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. on, not each evening, on Monday evenings, I should say, 7 p.m. And it's various nurses from different clinics like myself around the country. So it's kind of nice to see the variety of us presenting. But I think the best thing is the live Q&A after um, so that you have the opportunity to certainly ask us any generalized questions. Um, also know that you can always go the, the tonight's recording as well as previous recordings that even I've done and even some of the other nurses have done um, is on the My Mandel's Pharmacist and you'll be able to easily follow that on their website. I've done it myself um, many a time to, you know, have patients go there and take a peek um, if they're starting a medication and, and want them to have some further um a video, you know, uh, visual, because I think that is so important um, with all of this is to know that mainly the goal is, is to get the information out to you so that you can see it. And again, to make you feel like you can be a pro at this and you can conquer this and you can get through this cycle. And uh, we want to do whatever we can to make that, that step easier for you. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Wanda. I want to thank you so much for an amazing program tonight. Thank you for your time and your expertise and for really being able to kind of get in the weeds with some of these questions and really make people feel comfortable with everything going into their cycle. And that's really, you know, that's what this program is all about is to make people feel comfortable about what they're here for. <clears throat> and that is to, you know, what you're getting into that you're going to feel comfortable knowing that it's not it's not scary. It's not something to be worried about. It's just something that you may have a couple of questions and that's what pharmacist is for. So yeah. uh, thank you to everyone who joined us tonight, whether on Zoom or in the Facebook chat. All of your questions were amazing. We had a great time and uh, we really hope that you were able to learn something at home that really dro drove home uh, what this program is all about for you. Of course, Wanda, you mentioned it. I mentioned it before, but it's worth repeating that uh, all of these videos, both the full virtual live experiences that you watch tonight, as well as those individual little products that we talked about and many other products that we've done in other programs before are all available on our YouTube page, on our Facebook page that you can watch on demand. And then Wanda, you mentioned it before, but mymandelspharmacy.com slash pharmacist is where we have everything. It's all broken out. So you can click on, if you want to watch a full video so you can get all the Q&A, you can watch that. If you just want to see something on for example, the Gonalef pen, just click on that and you'll see a bunch of videos there that you can click through. And those are the ones that we always recommend if you just want to go back, you know, right before you're about to take your shot or right before you use the Sonera patch and you want to know how to apply it, you can watch a two or three minute, you know, video and get caught up on that. So we definitely look forward to seeing you all here again next Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so we will always be here for you for a great program with many different nurses who come on just like Wanda and give up their time to be able to share with you some stuff like that. Um, Wanda, is there anything else that you wanted to share before we wrap things up tonight? Um, sure. I have done something at each of my um, little talks here with Mandel's is I am also a certified healing touch practitioner, which is a type of energy medicine uh, therapy. It's a nice modality to help enhance a sense of well-being help to decrease stress. Um, COVID makes it a little difficult because it's a hands-on type of modality. But what I've been working on is trying to figure out ways to get this to you guys to be able to do some self techniques, um, taking a little time for yourself. So something I wanna say is that um, energy medicine or particularly healing touch works with the energy centers of the body, which is the chakras. 
And I think Craig might have a, um, a form there that he can let you see that will show you our energy centers. And what I just want you to see is they run up the center of the body. Um, they are represented by different colors and they help to kind of work and synchronize different parts of the body, specifically even organs and such. So what you'll see is that there are seven different colors there. Actually, they are the color of the rainbow. Um, and the lower part of the body there um, at the sacrum is what's called the root chakra. The orange chakra is what's considered your sacral chakra. The yellow is your solar plexus. The green is your, hot your heart chakra, or I'm in from Massachusetts, so you don't know how bad I want to say hot, but I have to say heart. Um, the blue chakra, the, little, the, the lighter blue, is your throat chakra um, and your brow and your crown, the top of the head. So each of these chakras, when sometimes there's an energetic stagnation or a little blockage um, or something that can get in the way, like stress, a little bit of the times today with, you know, uh, COVID, with a lot of things going on, this is a nice little way to reset yourself is to do a mini self chakra connection to connect, open and balance those chakras. So what you would do is you could place your right hand in a little cup formation here and have it where you're sitting down where your root chakra would be. And then we would take our left hand and about an a inch or so below your belly button, just put your palm there. And you would kind of breathe in nice and slowly. And you would want to think about, you know, increasing your um, capacity to be less stressed, not any, in any way, shape or form feeling um, out of control, not able to handle things. You want to breathe in calm and peace and release any stress and you would hold it for about a minute. And then what we do is what we call trailing hands. You now take the right hand, move it to where the left hand was on that sacral chakra area. And you move the left hand up to the yellow, which is right in between your ribs. And you hold that for a minute and you're connecting these two um, energy centers. So you're connecting them, you're opening and you're balancing them by holding for a minute. You could close your eyes, you could put music on when you're doing this. It's gonna take six minutes and that's it. Then you trail with that right hand again and you put it where the left hand just was, which is on that yellow circle, which is in between your, your ribs. And now we do to the green, our left hand where our heart is. And our heart is actually for a heart chakra, it's right at the sternum. And you hold there and you connect and open and balance those two energy centers. And then again, with trailing hands, the right hand goes where the left just was, the heart and then you cup a little bit your throat. You don't have to put it on your throat. You just cup a little bit with your hand. And again, you're sending and wanting to think about opening, connecting, balancing the energy centers of the body. Then you take the right hand, put it where the left was, cup under that throat chakra, and you put your left hand on your brow, and you're connecting and opening and balancing these two chakras, holding that for about a minute and then trailing with that right hand onto the brow and the left hand on the top of the crown. And all of these movements with the hands are held for about a minute. There's actually six different motions going up. So that's only six minutes. And I promise you, if this is something that you can incorporate into a little daily practice or even a weekly practice, having good open energy centers helps us to deal better with the stressors outside of ourselves that we always can't control, but we can help our body take in the energy from above and the grounding that we step on the grounding and bringing the energy from the earth. And by you having open flow of energy that really allows you to function optimally, whether it be physically or emotionally. So that's my little tip tip for tonight with those energy centers. And I hope that that brings you some peace and some encouragement and some calm and um, some confidence as you move forward in your cycle. And thank you everybody for um, having me this evening. And thank you to Mandel's for this wonderful program of pharmacist. Thank you so much, Wanda. And I, I will say if anyone is watching this even remotely around live of when we're, when we're recording it, I'm sure everyone can use a little bit of calm in their lives right now. So that seems like, a great technique that we could all use. So thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, is it okay if we post that up on our yeah. Facebook page, yep. uh, the event page for this program? Great. Mm -hmm. So we'll have that up there. So if you're watching this, um, if you're watching this after the fact, it'll be attached to the program, the video. 
So you'll be able to get a chance to check that out yourself. Uh, thank you so much again, Wanda. We appreciate it. Thank you to everybody that came. One question we always have for everybody out there, and this is just the way of the internet now, the best way to get the word out about pharmacists is by sharing it with a friend, a family member, a colleague, somebody who's going through something like this, somebody who's going through the process or is about to go through it, uh, somebody that you share that type of a connection with, let them know because that's the best way that they'll be able to find out about this program and be able to pay it forward. So just continue to you know make sure that the program is here for you. Know that you can come back any other Monday night for new questions, new nurses, new products. Uh, and my name's Craig and I'm here from Mandel's, but from all of us at Mandel's, thank you for joining us tonight and we will see you again next week. Good night, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Craig. Good night, everybody.